Welcome to the Dr. Aaron Show. May you live your truth. Good morning from La La Land. We are in the thick of it today. I am so excited for this topic today. It is um, how to break up three spiritual keys. And I have to say that um, I heard a great talk yesterday. Uh, a dear friend of mine, she, I haven't seen her in many years, but Annie Lala, she was on a podcast with um, I Love Marketing, uh, Joe Polish. And um, I didn't get the chance to listen to all of it because it was like a two hour talk, but just enough in the beginning that. I just got so inspired by the conversation of dating, love, and relationships. It's something that's really heavy on my mind because I'm witnessing, looking around at many of my friends in Los Angeles, and witnessing how everybody deeply needs love and connection, and yet at the same time, it feels like people are becoming more and more distracted with uh, social media, more and more unable to bond because there's like so many options with all the dating apps and everything. And um, realizing that, uh, you know, there's many, many different conversations within the realm of dating, love, and relationships. And one of the topics that I believe is rarely talked about that really desperately needs to be talked about is how to break up. Because the reality is this, is that they say, uh, I looked around some stats, and I can't say that I can have specific stats that are real, but according to Telegraph, the average woman will kiss 15 men enjoy two long-term relationships and have her heart broken twice before she meets, quote, quote, the one, this study reveals. And uh, from a spiritual perspective, I believe you are the one that um, until you really find yourself and love yourself enough and love your life, you can never really call in the one. But having said that, you know, a lot of people will get down on spirituality because they're like, come on, let's bring it down to reality. So today we're going to bring it down to kind of some stone cold reality, which, you know, I love to stay in the ethereal all the time, but let's take it down to logistics of breaking up. How do you break up? How do you lovingly break up? And um, from an energetic perspective and with uh, universal law and have it be the highest, best way of doing it and um, not... uh, harming anyone, not hurting anyone. And the reality is this is there's no formula. There's absolutely no formula and each relationship that's ever existed or will ever exist is unique into itself. And the reality also is that all relationships are eternal. There's no end to any relationship and a breakup is not, it may mean the breakup of the agreement of what that is in this form here. But the reality is that relationship goes on for eternity. And the reality, as far as I'm concerned, is the deepest that you've ever loved somebody, you will always love them at some aspect within your soul at that level. But let's get into it. So, uh, you know, for whatever reason, people break up, you know, whether people are desiring long term relationships, marriage, or the realities that you, you basically don't want to commit a relationship. The point is that you, there's some point where we all have dealt with breakups. And I believe that this conversation is even good for people who are with the one who are married, who have found their soulmate, because this is the reason why because we all generally have unfinished business with breakups of the past. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe there's a very, very few people that never dated before their marriage, but majority of people are. So those are the people I'm talking about. Whether you are still um, if you're dealing with a breakup right now, whether you've gone through them before and you still have kind of some angst around that or whether, you know, you just have com- uncompleted business, um, let's do that today, okay? So it's time to have mature maturity around breakups. It's time to spiritually grow and evolve and be able to have a loving breakup. So whether uh, you break up with a person because you picked the wrong person, maybe they cheated, maybe you had unfulfilled expectations, different lifestyles, not enough chemistry, different values, your missions didn't align, someone's too fat, too skinny, too short, who knows what the reason is that you break up. But there has to be a mature, conscious way of breaking up in a loving way. So the truth is, there isn't a formula for a loving breakup, but there is a conscious way of doing it that aligns with the universe that allows the energy to move that allows somebody to not hold those emotions in their body and begin to get sick or have those emotions in your body that will just trickle over to the next relationship because whatever is not completed from your past 
is going to be right here, right now in any future relationship. So how do we do it? And I think that it comes down to just having principles around it because the reality is some people will want to have a heart to heart conversation. Somebody will want to do it in a loving way. Other people, the partner that they're breaking up with or broke up with um, is not open to that. They're not open to a conversation. They're not open to come together and, and have a lovingly kind of um, uh, completion to a cycle. So how do you do this? Because um, I believe it comes down to kind of, I have three kind of tips spiritually to do it. And this means that you can do it within your own consciousness. You can go into prayer and meditation and do these three steps, or you can get face to face if the person is mature enough to actually do this with you together. And um, this is not, you know, the only way of doing it, but this is something that is, is uh, works for me as far as consciously knowing how the universe works. So it comes down to three things. Uh, you can get a pen and paper out or just listen, but they come down to three things. Number one, gratitude. Number two, growth. And number three is grace. So let's break these down. So number one is gratitude. Knowing that whether you spent a day, a week, 10 years with somebody, there has to be a gratitude. Gratitude, even if it was, maybe even they cheated on you, but something in you needs to have gratitude of how this has been a blessing, a lesson or growth or some miraculous times with somebody. There has to be a place to complete a cycle with another person to allow that energy to be released, the energetic, anything negative, any negative ties, you've got to go into gratitude of how this has been, you know, something that you're thankful for, an experience, a lesson, a blessing, whatever that is. And people go, well, how the hell can I be grateful for someone that cheated on me, that lied to me, that da 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 da. It's like, well, Maybe they taught you what you don't want. Maybe they taught you that you need to have a better picker and be more conscious when you are picking someone in your life. I don't know what that is, but find the gratitude. Until you find the gratitude, you're going to be stuck. There's going to be unfinished business within your own soul, within you and your higher self, the universe, okay? So number two is growth, knowing that you're here for growth. And I think to acknowledge and really uh, give gratitude for somebody for the growth. What growth was, what growth did you have in this? Did you, did you learn what you do like and don't like? Did you grow because you learned how to argue better? Did you learn because you learned how you shouldn't argue? Did you grow because you learned a, you know, a different, completely different way of living and a lifestyle that someone has? I don't know what the growth is, but I would recommend beginning to get clear of what the growth was there because all of life is designed for growth. So I know for certain that any relationship you've ever been has had you grow. Always. Doesn't matter if it was dysfunctionally wise or mature wise or spiritually wise or business wise or health wise. I promise you there was growth for yourself and for the other person in that relationship. And I believe that that's one of the keys to having it completion, knowing and seeing where the growth was. Number three is grace. This is the opportunity that it's not in the happy days and the happy times that we learn how to step into grace. It's in the hard times. It's in the heartbreak. It's in the times where we're going through the hardest time. Uh, they say that a ship and a crew does not become a true ship and a crew until it's gone through a storm. And so this is the opportunity to really learn how to step into your grace. Even when you are mad at somebody, even when you're hurt, when you're heartbroken, everything, to step into your grace at some level, to begin to um, hold your mean words and begin to, you know, take that into a therapy session, yell that into the universe, whatever that is, to begin to step into grace and to hand it over to your higher self, knowing that whatever has been done in this relationship has to be reflected back for both people. So whether that person lied, cheated, did something really deviant, hurt you, guess what? The universe is going to take care of that for them. There's called the law of circulation, the law of correspondence. The life is a mirror for that person. You don't have to do that. So you get to step in your grace and hand that over. And you get to just simply know that you have your own karma out of this. That stepping in the best thing you can ever do is step into your grace. Because guess what? Whatever you project, whatever mean things are said, whatever you do that's that's harsh is going to be reflected back. So this is the time to step into your grace. Whether you're going through the breakup now or you went through it in the past, you can still step into your grace around now. You don't have to bad talk that person to people. You don't have to gossip about it. You don't have to dramatize it, all that stuff. This is about you stepping into the highest version of yourself. So remember this, the spiritual axiom, the truth is that all relationships are the opportunity to discover more about ourselves 
and to practice becoming the highest version of ourselves with service and love. We're here to learn unconditional love and be true to our unique way of thriving. The goal is to grow, express, and serve without hurting or colliding with anyone else. That's the goal here. Can we love unconditionally? And there's certain people that we're going to soar with and certain people that we're not. That's why we date. We date to discover this. And so be careful what labels, be careful what commitments you make. When you're not quite ready, you haven't fully discovered who that person is, how their reactions are, how you guys vibe through storms. Go through some storms together, right? So today's universal law, we're actually past the time, so I'm not going to get into it, but it's basically the law of circulation. What you reap, you sow. So today's practice is to go into meditation and prayer, give gratitude, growth, and grace to any person you have ever dated or you feel you need to find peace within. Maybe in your past, way back, and then today's challenge is to write a letter of gratitude to somebody. You don't even have to send it, just do it. So on that note, you guys, I know today is the uh, opportunity to step into the highest version of yourself. You can find me at AaronFallHaskell.com. I'm on social media as Dr. Aaron. Have a divine day and may you live your truth.